I still, I'm not sure. Can you hear me on the microphone or should I just use my voice myself? I think it's going to be smarter that way. Well, today we are going to speak on attack vectors on mobile devices. And something very, very important, I've brought some chocolate. So if you answer questions or if you say something smart, you'll find one of these things just like this flying your way. Well, who am I? This is how I looked before I got into mobile security. You see, I used to be handsome then, now I look like a shaved monkey. I'm running a mobile computing consultancy and uh, we run websites, we do applications. Basically, you name it and we do it. And you might now wonder why do you need mobile security? Who of you needs mobile security to keep his own phone safe? Okay, this guy wants chocolate in the back there. The one with the hoodie. The reason is this thing here. Today, smartphones are given not only to technical employees, but everybody gets them. Administrators, secretaries, programmers. And for many less technical people, the user perception is that the phone is safe. And this has two reasons. First of all, there have been no large outbreaks so far. And secondarily, the phone is always in the pocket. And what's in my pocket? It must be safe. And this issue is complicated because you cannot run antivirus software on a phone. Why can't you run antivirus software on a phone? Who has an idea? Who? Good man, it was intended for you, we got another one. Good catch, because of the battery. So it is not possible to protect a phone using antivirus software. And the next problem is that users are stupid. There was a Symbian virus, it was called Kabir. It displayed a total of three warnings. Not one, not two, three. But the users clicked next, 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 next. And there is a nice little sentence, users choose dancing pigs over security. As we already said, smartphones are soft targets because the programmers, they don't know anything about mobile security. If you've been here today in the morning, there was the guy who was speaking on the Windows Phone 7. If you look at what the OEMs have been doing, it's just crazy. And well, we've got the open operating systems more smartphones, and finally, smartphones become more attractive as attacking targets for multiple reasons. First of all, you can photograph me, by the way, if you want. I am all for it. The point is this. First of all, a smartphone today has a very fast processor. So it means you can really do some brute force, and you can do quite a bit of junk with those smartphone CPUs. Secondarily, smartphones connect seamlessly to the PC. And finally, they can not only call premium rate numbers, but they can now also deduct money right from my credit card. How can they do it? Anyone has an idea? You have an idea? How can a smartphone attack my credit card? Can, can you repeat? For example, and in-app purchases. <laughs> Usually I focus on you and people who ask this question. Usually I throw five to six at them until they shut up. <laughs> well, now you might say, I bought the phone from a carrier, so the carrier should keep it safe. And to some extent, I also agree that it's a logical thinking. But the problem is this. The carriers cannot protect everything. Because today's smartphone not only has an FTOR radio, but it also has Bluetooth and wireless. And Bluetooth doesn't go over the carrier. And the moment a carrier interferes with the Wi-Fi transmitter of the smartphone, people like me from the tech press start to wail, this evil carrier. So this essentially, the carriers can't protect the smartphones. 
Before we get into any of the more advanced technical attack schemes, I see one person trying to flee already. I've got a question. What is the most common way how phones disappear? The most common way. This guy has heard my talk before. Who knows who these people are? Who knows who these people are? They are the Thuggy clan of India, who, when the Brits were still owning India, <laughs> when the Brits were still owning India, they essentially did what I'm doing to you right now, but they didn't give you things, but they took things away. And in British English, still today, a thug is somebody who you don't want to meet for a drink. And cell phones, they are stolen by two groups, by the teenage thugs, basically people like me but five years younger. They steal them for personal usage and for resale. And it's a rampant issue in Western Europe. Y yesterday, if you read the papers in Austria, there was a huge such scandal. And now I am asking you why, or I'm rather going to show you why carriers love theft. Who of you is my victim? Who wants to be my victim for today? A victim gets chocolate. Who wants to be a victim? You want to be a victim? You want to be a victim? It's not dangerous. Come on. There's a victim. Perfect. <laughs> Applause for the victim, please. Thank you so much for applauding. <laughs> okay. So where's my chocolate? You just okay. say one thing, I buy another one. This guy here, he owns this beautiful Samsung smartphone. I buy another one. If I steal it from him, what does he do? <laughs> okay, if I would be able to steal it from him. He's so fast, I can't. But what would you do if you would have to... <coughs> I buy another one. Exactly, and he would buy it with the carrier. And the carrier, obviously, charges outrageous prices for the phones. Thank you. <sighs> and the manufacturers, they also love theft. Because let's assume that a 14-year-old teenager who can't afford an iPhone steals an iPhone. Then he buys another iPhone. And now there are two iPhones on the market. So the market share of Apple raises. And so why should Apple be unhappy? It's true. No need to laugh. It's true. <laughs> why should Apple be unhappy? There is one way to stop these kinds of cell phone thefts. And this way is an email blacklist. And it works extraordinarily well, for example, in the UK. But the problem is this, the governments don't want to enforce it. Because if you as a government admit that you've got a problem with petty theft, who would vote for a government which can't control crime? Who of you would? Nobody. All of you are smart and honest. Very good. And then, of course, there is also the targeted attacks. If the person wants his phone, he steals his phone gets out the memory card, the data is usually unencrypted. And with that, it's time for the first of the three platforms we will look at. Who of you knows the guy who's standing at the bottom there? It's not me, hint. <laughs> if it would be me, the company would be better off. Who knows him? I know the CEO of Nokia. A very luckless poor man who was replaced by a Microsoft chill, but that's another story. Symbian was the first operating system to introduce some kind of security. It introduced the so-called Symbian signed code, code signing scheme. This meant that binaries had to be signed. And if the binary wasn't signed, then the binary wasn't allowed to do sensitive stuff, like, for example, call a premium rate number. And the system, the Symbian signed system, was broken down on a process level. Why on the process level? The person who, own, who has the phone in his hand usually is the legal owner. Nobody of you shares a phone nowadays, hopefully, with somebody else. 
Who of you still shares the phone with somebody else? Christo, you have been following me for two years. From every talk, you deserve two portions. An applause for Christo, please. This is the fifth time that you see this talk. Christo, my honor. His catching technique still hasn't improved. <laughs> and so the point was this, that processes were divided into tiers. And every tier required different types of signing and had different types of privilege. And as you already said, the capability is the token which must be presented to gain access to a privileged service. You might now be wondering, why am I going over Symbian in such detail if the operating system is dead? I'm going over it not out of boredom, but because these terms and the concepts, you meet them in every other mobile platform. And as said, in regards to the capabilities, there are three types of capabilities. TCB capabilities, then there are system capabilities, and then there are user capabilities which essentially are granted like they are granted on a J2ME application. And another thing is data caging. Symbian, it protects some folders from access by other applications. So it's basically like a sandbox which we have today. But the difference between the sandbox you have today and the Symbian sandbox was this, that today you are allowed to access one folder. In the past, you were allowed to access all folders except for one. And now there is a problem. People like me develop applications. And if I have to send every application to have compiled to the signing house, have to pay 200 euros, and have to wait a week, my productivity, well, it would be very, very low. And due to this, a developer certificate was introduced. A developer certificate allows me to say, my company, Tamogamon Limited, has these thousand phones. For these thousand phones, I, Tamogamon Limited, act as a trust provider. And these developer certificates, they are easy to obtain. What I need to do is I need to have a capital company, like a UK Limited. Who of you knows how much it costs to open the UK Limited? Numbers. Less than Who said less than 100 euros? She's too far away, so I cannot hit her with the chocolate on the head, so she can pick it up later if there is some left. Or do you want to come forward and pick it up? Okay. You know, in the past, I, in the past I, I glued on the chocolates, you are fat, then nobody wanted them anymore. <laughs> okay. These limiteds are very, very, very easy to get. And I can, if with this site, essentially, I can get these developer certificates. I open the limited, the Vagadugu Banana Rama phone certification and levitation company. It's based in the Banana Street 64 in Timbuktu. The company's house doesn't care. They get the taxes. Certiport doesn't care. They get their money. And I have a developer certificate. And this is the process which is used for a very, very, very dangerous Trojan called Spitmo. I'm now going to explain how Spitmo works. I need a victim. You see the guy in the back, he was affected by Spitmo, so he's fleeing. How does Spitmo work? Spitmo is a relatively simple Trojan. Who is my victim once again? You want to be a victim in the back there? Oh my goodness, okay, no victims for today. You people are bored apparently. Well, the point is this. I am the attacker. I cheat you people to visit a website. On this website, I ask you the bank website. You must give me the email number to send a security update to your phone. I collect these emails. When I've got a thousand emails, I request a developer certificate. It costs a few cents, so I waste some cents. Then I send these files, the signed files, back to you. You install them, and then I can, when a Trojan, an MTAN Trojan, an MTAN SMS comes in, I can read the SMS and can send it to the server. These attacks are used to attack banks. 
And of course, I've got some improvement ideas for the, if the authors are in the audience, I've got an improvement idea for them. The improvement idea is why not in the future create a small unsigned application, make the unsigned application collect the email, send the email back to the server and deploy automatically the update. It would save you a bit of effort and make it even simpler. And with that, it's time for Android, which runs under the slogan, Android is open, but it's not only open for development, but it's also open for dangerous code. I don't know who of you has ever dealt with Android before. Android is essentially a huge Java virtual machine. As you can see here, Android, the core operating system, the kernel is here. It runs a virtualization system called Dalvik, and Dalvik runs a bunch of applications. If you want more information on this scheme, ask me later. And the problem is this. The applications are written in Java. And Java is very, very easy to decompile. And so if you look for some popular application, you find 50 versions of the same application by different vendors which have been cloned. By simply decompiling the Java code, adding some ad code, or changing the string of the ad, and re-uploading the application to the website. And even if the Google market bans me, I don't really care, because there are 50,000 other stores where I can give my application away for free. And Android also has a security model. But the Android security model differs from the Symbian security model in that there is not some testing house which is responsible for granting the certificates, but rather that each and every user himself decides if he wants to grant permission or not. So basically every person decides for himself, for his own phone. As you see here, if you download an application, it shows you a list of what the application wants to do. And the attack scheme for attacking an Android phone, it is always, always, always the same. Every Android virus follows this scheme. Get onto the phone by social engineering usually or by masquerading as a legitimate application. And then either send the data to my master or call a premium rate number. And there is one pretty funny example. It's called Droid Kung Fu. Droid Kung Fu abuses the Android security model. And how does it do it? When an update comes, that's typical for Microsoft. Who of you recently received the Skype update for Android from Microsoft? Who of you got the update recently? OK. The thing is this. After you got the update, you suddenly got ads. Microsoft slipped the ads onto your phone during an update. Because most people, they just see the arrow, 12 updates are available, and they click Get All. And this is what is used by Droid Kung Fu. You get intentionally an outdated application, which then self-updates itself. And during the update process, you don't get to see the update, the update capabilities. And when Droid Kung Fu is on the phone, it basically starts sending home data. And now there is the funny thing. Droid Kung Fu contains an exploit, which on some phones gets its root rights. But it does nothing with these root rights. So this is probably an unfinished feature, which we will see very soon. Next up is Carrier I.O. Who of you has already heard of Carrier I.O.? OK, we're going to start this out with a little example. Christo, you are my victim. Please come forward. An applause for my victim, please. <laughs> Let's assume Christo is living in the beautiful United States of America. In the United States of America, the government wants to keep an eye on Christo. And someday, poor Christo runs after me, and I hit him over the head with a beer bottle. And he calls the emergency services, a shaved monkey just hit me with the beer bottle. Help! And then 
a service is activated, which is called E911. The government, the police who takes the call, can interact with his phone to see where he is. And Carrier IO originally was intended as a service for the government to track who is Christoph. Thank you so much, Christoph. Oh, thanks. But what my piece for you? <laughs> it was created by a company which was, which was elected as one of the top 15 mobile companies in 2008. The company is also called Carrier IO. It lives on Android, on Blackberry, on Nokia, on iOS, on every phone, you have those bastards right from the carrier as a free gift to you. And the problem is this. Their software, it reports quite a lot. It reports whenever you open an application, when you receive an SMS, if the screen is turned on and off, if a call is received, where you are, and what media you play. So for example, in my case, they could know Mr. Hanna often turns on his phone at night. So this means his marriage is not so good. And it means he has insomnia. He listens a lot to DJ Shadow. So this means that his ears are already very damaged. <laughs> he often receives calls from females who are working in his company, which means that there are too many females in this company and he must be sued for equal, equal distribution of the jobs. It's mandated under Austrian law. And this now it sounds crazy. Who of you thinks what I'm telling you is crazy? He wants some chocolate, apparently. <laughs> this is not crazy at all. The data which my phone collects on me is sent via HTTPS to a central portal. And every carrier, who, everybody who gets access to this portal can see for every individual person. So really, he can see that I am using my phone at 2 o'clock at night often. And the point is this, I cannot opt out from this thing. And just in case anybody of you wonders why the carriers deploy it, they say they need the program to better analyze and understand myself so that they can offer me better products. I've got one question. This stuff has been around for years. Why am I less and less happy with every phone I get? Next up, we've got the only, <laughs> we've got the only religious sect in mobile, the Church of Apple. Now, now, you know, their prophet recently died, so now they are really on the way to become a church, you know? Most churches, only when, they're, when their founder dies, they become really crazy. So now the jobs is dead, the situation can become really funny. Another picture with me in front, please. Come on. If you do, they do it the right way. Come on. Another picture for you. Wait a second. <laughs> 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 My phone is this. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Well, the most simple way to, to get a donation from the church is to spam them. If I tell a member of the Apple church that I know something about Apple, they will willingly give me a head, they will do everything just to know it first. And so it is very, very cheap. I just open a website with some silly picture of an iPhone, and all the believers, they click, click, click. S Steve Jobs, I pray to you, click, click. <laughs> and they click, they click often, and they get a virus. They download the virus, they ignore the security warnings, because it's Steve Jobs, the great god. <laughs> okay, there is another beautiful thing. Because the gods of Apple have decided their minions are too silly, the iPhone, if you buy it, you rent it. You can't run every app on it. And so there are jailbreaks where you visit the website and it unlocks your phone. And if any website can get root access, then also an evil website can do so. And now my idea was, I opened the website www.freelouboutins.com. 
For the, for the non-females in the room, Louboutins are expensive shoes. Every female dreams of them. I see one of them dreaming in the back. One candy for breaking your dreams. I'm so sorry. And on freelouboutins.com, you click there and you get the exploit. It would also work with me, but with me it's much easier. freeredbull.com. Can you repeat? Okay, whatever. <laughs> whatever he was saying, I don't know. It was most something bad, so the pure chocolate for him. Okay. The next thing we have is a few exploits which are typical to Germany. Germany is a strong area for the church of iPhone, and so many attackers focus on the land where the believers are. And there is a thing, it is called Renren. Very little is known about Renren except this that it has popped up on users' accounts, charged them 80 euros, and that was it. And they said, we didn't even download it. Many didn't even have an iPhone. So this is relatively strange. Nobody knows anything about Renren. And as I already said, there are two ways. Either it can be social engineering to get the password, or it can be an exploit in iOS. But me not being paid, I decided to do some research on my own. And the first thing I did was I figured out this thing. The Spiegel, it's a German newspaper. It is not particularly reliable, but on tech, they are one magnitude better than the New York Times. And so I, could, I said, one can believe them to some extent. And they gave us some good information. First of all, that non-IOS owners get attacked also. So this tells it could be phishing. And secondarily, they gave us this string. Who of you knows what this string says? What does this string say? It's an easy piece of chocolate for the Chinese. <laughs> Who of you knows what it says? It's the name of the app. And the name of the app is the world has difficult times ahead of itself. And I googled it and I saw this. A company called Renren is peddling the application. And the manufacturer string was only given partially by the Spiegel, but it sounded Beijing Guangxiang Wangji. And this, when I google it, it brings me to this poor fellow. I sent him an email asking him, my dear friend, could you tell me more? <laughs> and he thought, this guy is cha gua, which means as much as a fucking idiot. It's the only word I know in Chinese. So he has nothing to do with it, probably. It's similar to the malware some time ago, which contained the string, Miko, cut your hair. <laughs> Who of you knows what he's meaning? The first one who gives me the reason gets the chocolate. He was meaning a security expert from F Secure who's got long hair and he should cut his hair. Basically like I also should cut my hair eventually but it's so much work, it takes so much time. So I can understand Miko fully. But the next string, Renren, was much more interesting. Renren is a huge Chinese company. They are said to be the Chinese Facebook. And the really, really funny string was this. The company believes it will be increasingly shifting towards third-party licensed games in order to leverage the platform effect of Renren.com. And so, what do we know? Renren operates an internet website. That's another stock announcement. They are sitting on over $1 billion in cash, and they've got zero debt. So this is not like some American company, which is worth $10 billion, but has $15 billion of debt. These people actually have money. And so I decided I'm going to get in touch with them. I sent an email to their press department. I also have a press ID, so I thought, let's send an email to them. And I asked them, just friendly, 
please forgive me for getting in touch, blah, blah, blah. I would like to ask if the iPhone game Chinese drink was developed in-house or is a third-party product. The response came very, very fast and it cc the chief of investor relations for a normal, peaceful question. And now comes the unusual thing. There was no actual info and instead she wanted to know more from me. Who of you has basic understanding of PR? Okay, nobody wants chocolate anymore, you're all, all fat already. The point is this, the, usually if a journalist asks you something short, you just answer his question because it costs you nothing. If somebody asks at my company, Mr. Hannah, how often do you shave? I send him back every day in the morning. Because if I send him back, where are you working? He might get angry. He might say, he doesn't know me. What an asshole. I must write bad about his company. So this was really, really strange. But me being me, I sent them another friendly email. I told them I am working for a magazine where I really do work. And I told them that this made quite a splash in Germany recently due to creative use of app purchases. I didn't mention anywhere that criminal or anything. And the effect was I did never ever hear from them again. The first email took them eight hours to answer. This one, it is now 96 hours with them, more than 96 hours, I never heard back from them. I am not a lawyer, so I cannot say what this means. But I know if something smells like a fish, and <laughs> I really smell the fish. If anybody of you has explanations, please come up to me afterwards. That brings us to another, we're almost done, don't worry, you're rid of me in a few minutes. That brings us to the WAP scams. Today, especially with Nokia, people don't buy apps. They want everything for free. And these apps are monetized via ad banners. You see on top here, the ad banner, where I'm pointing with the pen now. Incidentally, if anyone recognizes the pen, it's a free piece of chocolate. Who had an idea? Well, it doesn't matter. If I now click on such an ad on the cell phone, the web browser is opened. Yes, you, you want to take a bet? Okay, he was looking so desperate for a piece of chocolate, he gets one still. <laughs> yes? You what? My bag is still there. Okay. <laughs> so, is this really his bag or is it anybody else's bag? Whose bag is it? Is it really his? Okay, he's honest, so another one for him. Attention. Okay. If I click on this ad from a mobile phone, the web browser opens a WAP URL. And when a WAP URL is, trans is opened, you get the so-called MSISDN number. And this MSISDN number is worth gold. Because if I have your MSISDN number, I can charge you money via, you ca via your carrier. And I get the money deducted off your phone bill. And this brings us a pretty complex economy of crime. On the top, we have the scammer. The scammer pays the ad house to run an ad, and in addition, contracts the carrier to get the right to bill from MSISDN. The ad house then gets in contact with the developer who shows the ads of the ad house in his app. The user uses the app of the app developer, who gets the ad from the ad house, clicks on the ad, the carrier charges the money and the scammer gets paid. So we've got a total of five parties involved and only one of them is acting criminally. Only this guy here is acting criminally. The developer doesn't know anything, he's powerless. The ad house doesn't really know much either. The victim obviously is powerless by stupidity. And the carrier, well. And as we already said, the user clicks the ad, the WAP request is sent, 
the MSI is the end is transmitted, and the carrier charges. And this is where the point gets hairy, because the carrier has pay to pay the MSIS Dian charge within less than 24 hours. So by the time you get the bill and you complain, if I'm the scammer, I'm already sitting in Panama with six females. So I'm long disappeared. They'll probably chop me to death anyways, but that's a different story. <laughs> well, with that we're almost done. It's time to look at the staff who are working in mobile. First of all, most mobile programmers still are completely unaware of security. There is no secure chain, and this means there is a huge amount of unfound and exploitable errors in the operating systems currently. An example for this was the HTC Bluetooth FTP. It was covered, I think, in some detail already today in the morning by the Windows Phone 7 guy, in case it wasn't. HTC Bluetooth FTP is a bonus gift to smartphone users, which is given out from HTC. And it allows you to access files in an outbox folder of the phone. And a well-mannered client, he sees, I am in the outbox folder. I am not allowed to go up anymore. An evil client sends the dot dot command in the root folder and then he can access slash windows. And the moment he can access slash windows on a classic Windows mobile device, the device is down. But why HTC Bluetooth FTP didn't become too much of a problem was this, that Bluetooth FTP requires pairing. And if I would today pair with any one of you, would you accept the pairing process? No. The average user wouldn't even understand what it means to pair. So the practical risk was relatively low. <clears throat> and we've got another benefit. The attackers, if there is anyone, any attacker in there, please don't beat me up after the talk. The attackers currently are not particularly smart. Every mobile computing programmer can create a cutting edge mobile virus today. I develop mobile applications for, to make money with them for selling and I could replicate any of the, of the Android viruses currently on the market with ease. Even my pupil who is in training could replicate most of them with ease. So we are not seeing any kind of really advanced malware just yet. But the attackers are socially smart because they need to get the people to accept the installation request. And secondarily, the attackers are greedy. There are no viruses like the infamous Dan Zuck, which brought you the nice pictures, the beautifully rendered graphics. And there are no viruses like I love you, which are basically a worm and which only causes havoc. The attackers today are greedy and they do no technical development unless it is needed to make money. And as they currently can make good money with social engineering, why should they do more effort? And finally, I've got a spring of new ideas for all those of you who are looking for new ways to create a better mobile virus. The last time when I had such a set of slides, it was at Confidence 2010, and I told the people how to bypass the, the, the quality assurance for, for iPhone, Android, and OV stores. Two months later, the first attacks were surfacing using my vector. So if anybody of you developed one of them, I want my money and I want it now, people. <laughs> the first idea which I suggest is mobile ransomware. Already today, there is products like FlexiSpy. I install FlexiSpy on my wife's phone and then I can read her SMS and see her phone call. And if she keeps calling the national the National Mail Callboy Rent Service with free sexually transmittable diseases. Well then, I better get my freak on with the stewardess from Malev. And I suggest in the future data theft which attacks the credit card numbers and similar sensitive data on the phone to then do identity theft and other funny things. 
The next thing is there are tons of exploits still open, like we heard today in the morning. The question is who finds one first? And then this is something which I personally expect to see after talking about this definitely. It's an attack which bridges from the phone to the PC. In the past, the PC, the PC and the phone were synced, hot sync, active sync, and so on. Today, it's even easier because this phone can act as a USB drive. And if I connect it to my PC, the auto start mechanism of Windows starts the application, which is not the auto start application. So all I would have to do as a virus is I would have to place an auto start application in the right folder and profit. And finally, another very, very funny thing I want to suggest is the mobile scam. Essentially, you send the person one or the other kind of email, and he then responds, and you either scam him off or you send him an SMS, he, call, he responds to a premium rate number he has to pay. There are 50,000 possibilities for that, and I predict a lot of new things like this will come up to us as well. And with that, I'm very thankful to all of you. If you want to follow my crazy ramblings on Twitter, you can do so as Tam Hanna. I thank you very much for having me, and it was my pleasure.